Hey, it's Josh Hewitt from Top Form Fitness, and once again, it is time, time to do it with you. Part two of my Road to Rip video series, where I take you through everything I'm doing to progress into a physique competition. If you haven't seen part one, make sure you check out that video down below. I'll put the link right there. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about the training program I'm using. So this program I'm on now, I'm calling Basic Anabolic Hypertrophy Training. And the idea is to increase the frequency of my workouts, gradually ramp up the volume of my training over a six week period, and to maintain a high intensity of training. So I'm working with antagonist or push-pull supersets. So we're doing a pushing movement, pairing that up with a pulling movement, keeping the intensity pretty high, and I'm working with drop sets at the end, uh, like on my last set of each superset. So it's a pretty intense program. The focus is still on building muscle. So to maintain lean tissue while you're losing body fat, I would suggest you still focus on training for hypertrophy. Is a lot of people do like high repetition, low intensity workouts because they think they're you know high reps, lightweight, fat burning. Basically, you're getting your fat loss from your calorie deficit uh, and maybe introducing some high intensity interval training. But you want to maintain as much muscle as you can while you're losing fat. That's the goal of this program. So I'm going to take you through a workout, show you like an example of what I'm doing right now with my training program. Hope you get some ideas from that. You can actually download a sample of this program, the introductory phase of it. I'll put a link down below as well. I'm just about to uh, to dose up on some Pump Freak. I want to get as swole as I can in this workout. I also am going to be taking some niacin. I like that nice flush you get. I'm trying to increase blood flow as much as possible. So getting the Pump Freak, adding a little extra citrulline to that. Uh, I'm going to try to blow it up in this workout. So I'm starting off with a T-bar row. This is one of my favorite back exercises right now. And I'm gonna be supersetting that with the incline dumbbell chest press. So make sure that you really squeeze at the top or in the contracted position and then control the negative. So I like to go twice as slow in the eccentric phase as I do in the concentric. When you reach fatigue, then move on to the second exercise, which is in this case, the chest press. So basically I'm pairing up the pulling exercise with the pushing movement and performing each one back and forth in superset fashion, coming to fatigue with each exercise. On the last set, as you'll see coming up, I am gonna to go to fatigue and then drop set to a lighter weight and then go to failure with that as well. So again, you'll see here that I'm performing the negative under control, not letting the weights drop back to the start position, trying to maintain continuous tension through every repetition. So this is my first working set. I've already completed the warm-up sets before this, uh, so getting right into it here. In this program, I perform between three and six sets, or supersets, uh, starting off with three and ramping up the number of sets, increasing the volume over the course of the program. The rep range is between six and 12 repetitions, so there's two lower body workouts and two upper body workouts in the program. So you alternate between upper body and lower body, uh, aiming to hit each muscle group twice a week. So it is a high frequency training program. Now moving on to my second superset, still working on maintaining continuous tension, really controlling the negative of each repetition. I'd actually like to be holding each contraction at the top position a little bit longer than I am here. Uh, I think this weight is a little heavier than I should be using for this rep range. And I'm trying to focus more on the contraction, on creating as much tension as I possibly can rather than how much weight is on the bar. Uh, I've tried to move away from ego lifting and getting more into focusing on the feel of the exercise and really focusing on creating as much tension as possible during each exercise and each repetition. So with this first pair of exercises, I'm performing a push and a pull in the horizontal plane with the chest press in a row. But for the next pair of antagonist exercises, as you'll see coming up, I'm performing a push and a pull in the vertical plane using a pull down and an overhead press. And then I'll be finishing each workout with some isolation work for either arms or shoulders. And like I said, I put a link to the program down below. You can download that there and check it out. Now I'm moving on to my last superset. So this is going to be a drop set. When I reach fatigue, I'm going to have the weight reduced and continue to perform more repetitions to fatigue. I do this on the last set of each exercise only.
Okay, it's time to speed things up a little bit and let you check out the rest of the workout. And now I'm moving on to the second superset on the program, performing lat pull downs and overhead press. Same basic principles apply, really focusing on continuous tension throughout each repetition, uh, slow control tempo, really controlling the negative, holding the contraction, and avoid bouncing or swinging the weights. Now, as you can see here, I'm using the uh, grip free, the Flexilate grip free training straps. I really find that those help me isolate the lats when I'm doing this exercise. Get the grip out of the equation. Uh, your grip doesn't become the limiting factor. You can really get focused tension in the back and take those muscles to complete fatigue. Moving on to the overhead press. This time through the program, I'm using a standing dumbbell overhead press, but I have used a barbell overhead and seated pressing movements as well. It doesn't really matter which variation you choose. As long as you're sticking to the basic template of the program, anything that fits the bill will work. And in fact, I do find that it helps to switch up the exercises every few months just to keep your body adapting. Just switching from barbell to dumbbell or switching the angle of the exercise slightly. Okay, let's fast track things here a little bit so you can check out the drop sets at the end of this superset and see the shoulder isolation exercises I'll be using at the end of the workout. And now I'm finishing off the workout with some isolation work for the shoulders using the rear flies and the incline lateral raises. Again, using strict form and really trying to focus tension on the target muscle groups here. Especially when it comes to isolation work, I think it's very important to use a weight that you can control with strict form. I don't believe that swinging around a heavy weight is going to get you the results you're after, especially when you're targeting smaller muscle groups. This has become one of my favorite exercises for the medial delts. Performing the lateral raises at a slight forward incline like this takes away any momentum, makes it really hard to cheat, uh, reduces the involvement of your anterior deltoids and really targets the side delts. Definitely an exercise worth trying, but make sure you use a weight that's appropriate. It's a lot harder than performing just regular standing lateral raises. All right, I'm doing a drop set here and then finishing things up. So give this program a shot, let me know what you think. 
you have any questions or comments, post them in the comment section below the video. And until next time, stay strong.